Hey guys, welcome back to Bean Soldier TV. Uh, before we get into anything, I just want to apologize. Sorry for not opening for a couple weeks. I have been playing this specific deck so much over the past two weeks, and I can honestly say that I I think that this is the best deck. Hands down. This deck has an out to everything. This deck can outgrind everything. And it has some insane synergy that we're going to talk about towards the end of the video about why I genuinely think that this is the best deck. So without going into specifics or anything, we're just going to go and uh, get right into the deck profile and we're going to talk about why this deck is actually insane. So uh, starting with things off, we start off with two golden boy. Uh, heart and soul of the deck. You don't need more than two. Don't spend don't spend an extra 140 bucks on a third. You don't need it um, The only decks that are playing three are pure and pure sucks <laughs> Without an additional engine. So again only two Elwich and for the mommy of the deck uh, We are playing three Ray So if you want to consider golden boy being the pimp uh, and Ray being you know, I'm not going to say anymore. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, Ray being another incredible addition to the deck. One thing that we've talked about with Elich before was the fact that Elich didn't have a normal summon for the deck. So people are playing like Invoked or they're doing the Synchro Elich. Ray is insane as a normal summon for this deck. Moving on to the hand traps. We are playing 10 of them. We are playing 3 Ash. Three Valor, as well as the one of Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre is the actual, actually the 40th card in the deck. I couldn't come up with a better card to put in. Um, again, another card that you could substitute for this would be like Ghost Morning Moon the Chill. I I don't see the point of playing seven effect Valors. Is <laughs> basically what Ghost Warner does. And Ghost Ogre, if for whatever reason you need to put it on the field for disruption, you can. I just think it's an overall better option. And then for the last hand trap of the deck, I know it's a little out of order putting Imperm here, but we are just going to put Imperm in with the hand trap section. So we were playing 10 because, I mean, you still want to stop Synchro Eldritch from doing their plays if they go first. So having 10 hand traps is fairly decent. You're going to see one in your opening hand most of the time. Moving on to our spells, we're playing three Cursed Eldland. This is where the synergy comes in. At some point, we're going to bring up Cursed Eldland again later. About how insane Eldland is. If you don't know what Eldland does, you pay 800 life points to search a Golden Land card or an Eldritch monster. And if it's sent to Grave, you get to send, again, one of those same names. Eldland is insane. Love this card. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, though with this deck is Eldland does keep you locked into attacking with zombies. So if you're trying to poke with your Hayate, you need to get this thing off the board first. You need to get this thing off the board first. So that is the only Eldritch spell that we play. So you might be shocked by that. But moving on to the Striker package. Playing two Widow Anchor. Shockers. Playing three Shark Cannon. A lot of the ratios for this are inspired by Ryan Useless, so you'll find a lot of similarities. Uh, moving on to the power one ofs, um, being multi roll, afterburner, and hornet drones, as acting as your fourth ray. And then moving on to the field spells, we're only playing two area zero, uh, with the terraforming to back it up, as well as the second terraforming target being Mystic Mind, which is basically your auto end button if all those spells. Um, and our last spell being Rhoda, just to search out Ray. So, that does it for our spells. Moving on to our traps. The only Elixir we're playing is Scarlet Sanguine. You might have noticed that since we didn't have any other Eldritch, uh, Elixir spells in the spell section. As well as three Conquistador. And as well as three Joaquero. So, Conquistador doing the popping, Aquero, ay, 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 doing all the banishing. So, this paired, paired along with Shark Cannon, you have six ways to banish cards in your deck, all of which basically replace themselves. 
I'm sorry, Orcus. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry for Orcus players. You're not playing. You're just, you're not playing. So that does it for the main deck. And we'll, again, we'll go over the synergies towards the end of the video, but that does it for the main. Moving on to the extra deck. Uh, everything's pretty standard for the most part. Uh, three Kigari and three Shizuku. I mean, self-explanatory. I mean, anybody that needs to know what these cards do, you're a little late to the party. Um, one of the non-standard ratios, only two Hayate. Um, one of my friends, we, we've been kind of putting this deck to the test. He's playing three. I play one card that he doesn't. So you could bump this up to three if you don't like the one card that I play instead of a third Hayate. Um, but I've been perfectly fine with two. One thing to be really cognizant of with this deck, is you can't burn through your Sky Striker cards very fast. You need to be conservative. We don't play Avarice. We don't play Hercules base. So once they're gone, they're gone. So you just have to be super mindful of it and just pace yourself. Again, moving on with the Sky Striker stuff. One Kaina and the new one, Zeke. Zeke's incredible in this deck for getting your monsters off the board. And another card for getting your monsters off the board. This is the card we're playing instead of the third Hayate. Phoenix has come up for me a ton. Especially as a link to, to get into our access code talker, which we'll show you here in a second. But um, Phoenix is generically great for getting your Conquistador, your Aguero, your Golden Boy off the field when you need to. So I've been finding that I need Phoenix and I don't need the third Hayate, I've never missed the third. So again, you can replace Phoenix with um, with a third Hayate if you really want to. Moving on to one of our boss monsters. Uh, we're playing Black Luster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. This card's insane. If you're not playing this in your Eldritch deck, you are wrong. <laughs> Very few decks have an out to this. Um, Orcus does, and... Um, Adamantipator does with Dragite, but that's pretty much it. You bo boost this thing up to 4,500 attack. What's outing this thing other than like a 5,300 access code? And you're gonna stop that access code from even happening with the amount of back row that you have. There's nothing that's gonna out this thing besides like a Kaiju or something. So, moving on to another one of the unique packages of the deck. We are playing one Halifibrax for the Selene combo to get into Access Code Talker. So if you don't know how the combo works, it actually works with Effect Veiler, which is really odd. So you have a myriad of ways of getting into Halifibrax, whether you shark cannon your opponent's hand traps, whether you just normal summon a hand trap, uh, or you Widow Anchor take a tuner monster that they happen to have on the side of the field that doesn't really come up that often. But you summon your Effect Veiler off of Needle Fiber, go into Selene, Selene gains the counters, Selene specials Effect Veiler back, and then you link the Selene and the Effect Veiler into Access Code Talker. Easy cleanup. It's a fantastic way of just beating your opponent out of nowhere, just having an automatic win button. So that does it for the extra deck. I do have a side built for this. Um, I'm very lucky that I'm in an area that Locals is starting back up, and with the first locals with this deck, we went 4-1, losing to Dinos, because Dinos is by far the hardest matchup for this deck, and um, made it to top four, and then like we didn't play till finals, but me and my buddy that have been playing this, we both made it to top four, and it, it, it was insane. We both lost to Dino, and that was it. So um, we need I think we need to work on this side a little bit more for the Dino matchup, but regardless, let's talk about it. So, side, one Pancratops, three Sphere Mode, because I hate Nibiru and we don't really have a normal summon in the deck, you have plenty of ways to special summon Ray in this deck. So, you don't need your normal summon. And Sphere Mode beats the crap out of Man out Emancipator. Like, outs Buster Lock, outs the Dragite, outs the Borlode Savage, outs an Appaloosa, like, you don't care. <laughs> And I think it's better than Dark Ruler, because then, like, you just immediately out three things, rather than having to, like, 
use all your advantage trying to break their board when you can just plop a round boy on their field. Um, other cards, two Mystic Mine, just to see it more often going second. Moving on to traps, three evenly matched. I mean, why aren't you? Why wouldn't you play evenly matched? It's insane. So much better than Lightning Storm. Moving on to our going first options, summon limit, because we don't really need to summon more than twice. And the cards, the decks that we're uh, siding summon limit against, they're not going to win with only two summons. Like they can't, they can't play. And when you're setting four or five every single turn. There's no way that they're going to be able to out this. Like, they just, they just can't. And the last card in their side is a Pointer of the Red Lotus. I don't have three yet, so my option uh, for substitution was Solemn Judgment. If you don't have a Pointers, you can play Judgment. The whole reason that you're playing a Pointer is to stop things like Lightning Storm or Evenly Match. And if they don't have it, you take out the starter card. So, it's just being wary of evenly matched because this deck does it doesn't hard lose to evenly like you could just come back from it but you, you just don't want that to happen in the first place so that's why we're playing a pointer so let's just go ahead and get into the main interactions of the deck so our first interaction comes from Area Zero and Eldland. So these two cards, when you see them in your opening hand, if you're losing this game, they they must have opened the nuts because you're going extremely plus off of these two cards. So first things first, you're activating your Eldland, you're paying eight, your 800 and you can search for whatever you need to. Let's just say we search our our golden boy let's just say we search golden boy cool so now we activate our area zero we target our outland and we excavate let's say we hit a striker card it doesn't matter what it, what happens what we hit outland will now destroy itself outland now uh its effect will trigger engrave to send another uh to send either an outlitch or send a golden land spell, uh, spell or trap, like whatever you need. So you've now gotten two interactions off of your Eldland. You've added a card with your area zero and you have, theoretically you have a golden Lord in hand. One thing that's insane now for the second interaction with golden Lord in area zero, with golden Lord, this doesn't apply to its graveyard effect, unfortunately. Oh, God, I wish it did. But if Golden Lord is in your hand and you send a spell and trap from your hand to the grave, you can send your area zero to special ray directly from the deck. So not only does this combo give you ray access, this gives you multiple searches. I mean, obviously you can do like your Suzuki search during the end phase, let alone the other three cards that are in your hand, four cards that are in your hand like this interaction is stupid not only do you have that interaction but something else that you can do with conquistador conquistador pops your area zero as well to special ray from the deck there are plenty of ways that you have access to ray with this deck as well as recycling all of your spells and traps and grave with Eldlich. It's insane. If you're opening Area Zero and you're opening Curse Eldland, that is by far the most insane thing that you can do. <laughs> Other small interactions in the deck. So let's say, again, like I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that like, this is Area Zero. Um, this could also be a multi-roll. Basically, any card that can send a card from your, your field to the grave is great. <laughs> so let's say you have multi-roll or area zero, either is perfectly fine. And you also have Conquistador without access to Outlitch at all. Um, one thing you can do is set your trap, your Conquistador, your Aquero, uh, whatever you need, and send it to the grave so that you can just get your Outlixer from the deck. So even if you open, let's say you open multiples, 
So let's say I open two Sanguine. Rather than having a duplicate Sanguine, I can just send the duplicate so that I have Sanguine and a Conquistador, Sanguine and a Aquero. So you can send whatever you need in this deck so you have like the alt optimal back row, which I, I think is awesome. It fixes your hands. You can fix your hands in this deck. So that's another really, really important interaction that I've personally found in this deck. So just area zero and multi-roll with any of the Eldritch spells and traps is just stupid. Um, more like niche interactions you have, like let's say you don't have area zero, um, but you need your Eldritch engrave. You can use the Eldritch effect to target the ray, tag the ray out, and then still be able to send the Golden Lord to grave with whatever spell and trap you need to. There's just so much synergy. One deck that this reminds me of is True Draco's, uh, True Draco Striker, or Draco Striker, whatever you want to call it, where every single card is a powerhouse. I, I don't think that there's a single card in this deck that you don't want to see. And you have access to everything. So one other advantage that this deck has compared to a lot of others, this deck has an out to everything. This deck literally has an out to everything. And when Dragoon comes out, this deck has an out to Dragoon. So, and it will play Dragoon. And we already have how we're gonna put that into the extra deck here whenever that does come out. This deck, by far, has the best matchups against every single deck that's out right now, hands down. Compared to some other decks, this deck always has a chance to win. This literally, if you didn't win, you probably could have taken some different steps to win. <laughs> Unless there's like an absolute blowout card. So, but let me guys, uh, let me know what you guys think. Personally, I think that this is the best deck. Um, I have been absolutely slapping on Raided, um, practicing with my friends. This deck is catching on. I know a lot of people are starting to play it. Um, I just kind of wanted to put this out here because I thought of it first <laughs> and we'll just kind of see what happens. I'm interested to see where this goes and I want people to start picking up this deck because this deck is actually insane. So thank you guys for watching and again, leave your comments down below. Thank you guys.